test, that's 3%. We did a little bit of math, 3%. So if you had a 67, you go from a D to a C, just by proving that you've got flashcards. Okay, you've got to do something. Okay, you guys have got to do something because what you're doing is working. All right, we clear on, on what I'm talking about? Okay. Let's talk about metamorphic rocks. Okay. Another way that you can study, and we're gonna I'm gonna try to model this for you, is making concept maps. Hey John, do you ever get to make concept maps? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do some really brief, very basic outlining concept maps as we go through this. Okay. First thing with metamorphic rock. All metamorphic rocks are rocks that have undergone heat and pressure. Heat and pressure. Heat and pressure does things to rocks. Rocks don't like heat and pressure. They, they kind of change. Um, I liken this to, if I take, I actually had some, some gal come in here like, Mr. Court, can I interview you because you bake? Okay. So I spent 10 minutes talking to a girl how I made a pie. Okay. I made an apple pie, put it in the oven, and baked it, right? Exposed it to high temperatures and heat. Those apples started out really crisp and juicy. How did they end up? Hard. Soggy and mushy. Right? Because that's, I mean, that's apple pie, right? Nice, soft, juicy, delicious apple pie. Um, my apple pie got baked. Now, if you add the heat and put pressure to it, you guys are, I don't know, if, has anyone ever heard of a pressure cooker? Yeah, yeah. I have one. Okay. Some people still use pressure cookers. Before you had microwaves, you had pressure cookers. And you have this heavy duty pot that locks together and it literally traps all the steam in the pot. And you're adding pressure to the food. So not only are you cooking it with heat, you're cooking it with pressure. So you can cook like really tough meat, like stew meat, and at the same time you would cook any other meat and get it really, really tender like you cooked it all day long, you can do that in 20 minutes in a pressure cooker because you added heat and pressure. Is that unhealthy? No, actually it's quite healthy. Oh, well, you can. You can make bombs out of a lot of things, but we're not here to learn how to make bombs. Um, you like no, 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 not time to talk. It's time to write down. Okay, heat and pressure does things to rocks, okay. It doesn't matter if it's igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. Gentlemen, that's your warning. It doesn't matter if it's igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. If you put a rock under enough heat and pressure, it will cook. What does that cooking do? It changes two things. This sounds like a great test question. It changes two things. It changes the physical structure and the chemical makeup. Physical and chemical, right? Physical changes versus chemical change. What's a physical change? Like the shape. The shape. The shape. The okay. What would be a physical change to water? Like, um, like liquid. Liquid. What's that? Liquid or solid. Liquid or solid. So if it goes from ice to water, that's a physical change. What happens if I throw a bunch of salt in water? Is that a physical or a chemical change? Chemical. That's a chemical change because the salt is no longer salt, it's dissolved in the water. Okay, that's good you guys understand that. I'm gonna see if I can find a better pen. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, features of metamorphic rock. Oh man, this looks like a test question. Hmm. I don't try to give you frivolous slides. If it's on the slide, I can ask a question on it. Frivolous. Okay. Heat and pressure. Well, there's physical and chemical changes, right? Well, one of those physical changes is really obvious to see. 
the physical change that's really, really obvious to see. So heat and pressure do things to rock. One of the things they do is they cause foliation. Foliation looks like a rock has layers and bands in it. So here we have like our graphic organizer concept map thing going on. So taking notes on one side and kind of drawing my notes on another side. How does it all work together? Well, here we have a granite. Granite is a what kind of rock? No, granite is not metamorphic. What is it? It's igneous, right? Liquid rock cools really slowly, intrusively, coarse grain rock. See all these different minerals? So here we got some amphibole. This looks like a little bit of plagioclase, maybe a little bit of quartz, a little bit of feldspar. You take those minerals and you squish them and heat them and squish them and heat them and squish them and heat them. This is what the rock will turn into when it comes out of the oven of the earth. The heat and pressure turn this rock into this rock. Why the penny? The penny's there to show you how big the rock is. So geologists, you'll see geology pictures, they'll have a marker or a ruler or a knife or a rock hammer or a boot or someone standing there to show you how big it is in a picture. Because you have no, this could be five feet wide. You wouldn't know. Okay. Um, so I know that there's a rock. I always spell this wrong. Nice is a foliated rock. It comes from granite. So this would be some way you could be taking notes on the side. Another way to take notes that would be helpful to learn from. Okay? Did you get this? Okay? Okay. Now, well, wait a second. Let's talk about that niece a little bit more. There's two ways to get niece. You can get niece directly from granite. This is why that saying is just so goofy. Nice is nice, but don't take it for granite. Oh, Mr. Coy, you're stupid. Yes, it is very stupid, and geologists have been saying it for years, and we all laugh at each other when we do because how stupid it is. <laughs> but if you can remember that nice is nice, but don't take it for granite, then you will always know that, oh, what's the parent rock of Nice? Oh, oh, Mr. Gordon, dumb joke. Oh, never get out of my head. Granite. Okay. Well, that's one way. So Nice is granite? That's one way. But it doesn't always happen that way. You don't always have these beautiful granites that turn into nieces. Sometimes you start with a really kind of ugly rock called shale. Shale is a nondescript, typically black rock. It's sedimentary. It's made from clay. <laughs> and it's got bands and layers in it. It's just, it's laid down. It's, it's shale. It's very easy to break. It's not very hard. Shale. Well, if you introduce heat and pressure to shale, it starts to harden and get tighter and tighter and tighter, and it also develops foliation, so then you have also shale is, oh, I'm sorry, not shale, no. Slate is a foliated metamorphic rock, and it comes from the rock shale. Does that make sense? Okay, if I metamorphose shale, it turns to slate. This is really low-grade metamorphism. And when I see, say low-grade, it's a little bit of heat, a little bit of pressure, but it's not the same thing as this kind of heat and pressure. And I have a chart to show you that. So the arrow should be a higher-grade metamorphism is happening down here. Well, if that slate is introduced to a little bit more heat and pressure, the slate starts to get cooked. So here we have a metamorphic rock start, starting to, to get cooked. So the slate turns into phyllite. The phyllite was slate. And the phyllite will turn schist. And the schist will turn to nice up here. OK, so how do you get a nice? Well, you can either get it straight from an igneous rock, or you can go through this process of metamorphing a shale. OK, so you guys see the two ways to get a nice? Yeah. And Mr. Cord, Yeah. And they're not possible to actually like reverse Wait, this go backwards? Kind of? No, you don't go backwards. What would happen is if you have a metamorphic rock, metamorphic rock is like 
the rock cycle, there's no end, right? It just goes and goes and goes. But if you talk, the most changed rock that you can get is a metamorphic rock. So if you work your way down through here and you get the knees, it's just going to sit there until one of two things happens. It either gets one of three things. It'll either get more metamorphism and change its structure a little bit more. Two, it could be exposed at the surface and break down and turn into sediments and then be washed away. And that would you know, make sediments and that could make sedimentary rock. Or three, it could increase the metamorphism even more. And as you increase the heat and pressure, increase the heat and pressure, after Nice, what happens? It melts. And then the rock goes back to igneous rock. So the only way to go backwards is to go back to something else again. And then go through the process again. That's cycle. Cycle doesn't really go backwards, but it can go any which way in the cycle. Do you guys have any questions on how two ways to get Nice? I will say, oh, Nice slate phyllite schist are all foliated metamorphic rocks. Might be a good idea to know what these are. You, I'm not necessarily going to say, here's a sample, what is this? But you should know that slate is a foliated metamorphic rock. I gave, last year on my test, I had a chart. Chart. Listed a whole bunch of rocks. Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, and said, what was each? That's how I tested it last year. We've changed it up this year, so you'll see how it looks this year. But that's my requirement, so I recommend you learn it. Okay, so this is what we just talked about. So here we have Asia. Here we have India. You guys notice, like, if you look on a world map over here, India is smacking up into China, right? Okay, India used to be floating in the Indian Ocean. It smacked up into the continent, and when two continent crusts smack together, you make mountains. So what are the tallest mountains in the world? The Himalayas. The Himalayas! Did you guys get that the Appalachian Mountains used to be that big? That's what's cool about the Appalachians. They used to be that big. Weathering and erosion. Weathering and erosion. So what we see in the Blue Ridge is what happened down here. So, lava's magma, a lot of metamorphism. Okay, over here, it's low-grade metamorphism. It's not as much heat and pressure because you're not right down near the heavy stuff. But as you start moving down in, into the metamorphic areas, you go from these nice foliated slates. Well, look at this. The foliation gets bent. And as you increase the heat, those minerals start to change a little bit. They start to separate out. Now we get these real schisty rocks. I mean, nowhere else in all of your school do you get to talk about schisty rocks. That is such a schisty rock. Come on. Okay, they start to separate out, and if you give it even more heat and pressure, the black, the black minerals and the white minerals, and the light minerals and the dark minerals will completely separate out into big bands like we see in these pieces. And if you, keep, if you keep adding heat and pressure, you get these little blobs of lava. Okay? Okay, so example of foliated rocks, this is just one example. Shale here turns to slate. The best countertops in the world, in my opinion, are slate, not granite, slate. Slate is completely impervious to water, it's waterproof. You don't, you don't have to treat it, you don't have to do anything. It's awesome. really hard. Do you guys have any questions up to now? So we've been talking about heat and pressure that foliates the rocks, and here are some examples. We got that? Okay. All I said was that there was a shale. Okay. There's also another category of metamorphic rocks called unfoliated. This might even also be called non-foliated. I've seen it both ways. Non-foliated, unfoliated. They both mean that there is no foliation. And the foliation looks like what? Layers or bands. Well, what would that look like? This, this has got to be one of the coolest rocks I have. I just got this on a field trip. No so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it out to you guys and do this serpentine pattern. So like go down the tables this way, pass over to Cedric to Danielle, come back up this way, pass over to 
uh, Dejan and Sleepyhead here, and then back that way. Hit him with the rock. Okay? This is Quartzite. Okay. This is not Quartz. Okay, get this in your head. Uh, this is an easy mistake. This is not a piece of Quartz. This is Quartzite. This is a rock that used to be sandstone. So we come to our organizer here. So we have unfoliated. So what does that look like? You know, just kind of crystals and minerals all over the place. Flakes and minerals all over the place. Okay, it's not foliated, it's unfoliated. The first example we have is quartzite. Which comes from sandstone. Okay, quartzite from sandstone? Think about this. Here's your sandstone. Sandstone is made of what? Sand grains. Are sand grains big or small? Small. They're typically small. They're all compacted together. They harden. They lithify into rocks like this. You introduce this to heat and pressure, and out comes the quartzite. The quartzite, this is kind of hard to see. Did you guys at all see the glint or the glimmer to this? Every little sand grain starts to grow into a crystal. The heat and pressure allows those minerals to, to start forming again, and you get these tiny little crystals. And you go from tiny little crystals to where this is, all of those sand grains are morphing into quartz crystals. But it's not quartz formed like a mineral forms, it's quartzite formed from sandstone. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this rock around. Really cool rock. Okay? I'm also going to hand around... This is a really beautiful niece. Um, I got this in the western end of the county. This is just a beautiful niece. Um, and this is slate. And you can see the difference if you look at these three rocks. Unfoliated, foliated. Okay? Okay, another example of an unfoliated rock. So this goes into my, my chart over here. I have marble. Mm -hmm. Marble is made from limestone. Okay, so the, now once again, these are just a few here examples. There's here tons of these examples out there. But marble comes from limestone. Hey, if I put acid on marble, what will happen? It will melt, but uh, the term I'm going for, it'll, it'll fix. It'll, it'll start to react with the what mineral in marble? Calcite. Marble has calcite. Now if you say calcium, it's wrong. If you say carbonate, it's wrong. The mineral itself is calcite. Okay? Marble, limestone, calcite. Now, I love talking about marble because the ancient Roman Empire, they were pretty smart. They weren't very nice people, but they were really smart. And they knew how to build stuff. They would build all these monuments and temples and buildings and cathedrals and blah, 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 blah. All these things they built. And they put a thin layer of marble on the outside. Well, about a thousand years later, give or take, I don't know the dates perfectly, not a history teacher, some uh, Italians said, hey, we want to look like we're still like the Roman Empire. We're going to look awesome. So we're going to build three buildings. We're going to build a baptistry. We're going to build a cathedral, and we're going to build a tower. And they start building out of this marble, but they forgot how to build. And they start building on really soft ground. And marble is really dense and heavy because it's undergone heat and pressure. The baptistry sunk about, has sunk about five feet into the ground. The cathedral is shifted sideways. It's got all kinds of cracks and stuff in it. And the tower, they didn't even finish building the tower. The tower, they started building it up, and it started to fall over. They said, well, this isn't a good idea. What's going on? How can we fix this in our genius engineering brains? Let's start building the tower this way. Started to fall over some more. Let's do it again. Let's start building the tower this way. They kept trying to counter-build. So the leaning tower of Pisa 
even if they straightened it all the way up, it would be a curve because it's not built straight. But it, it's built out of marble. It's built out of marble. Yeah. Let's do Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah. So, one way to do like a graphic organizer is to do it this way and kind of have this to look at in your notes. If you know everything here, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Or you can look at charts like this. So remember that there is a graph on the test. You just don't know which graph it's going to be yet. I've shown you a bunch of graphs. So here we have the rock name, slate, phyllite, schist, knee. So we have that increasing metamorphism. These are all foliated rocks. Here's the texture. These are non-foliated rocks. Now, this chart is adding something that I want you guys to write down. It's adding a rock called anthracite. Well, you can get black lung if you mine it for too long. Dejan, you know what black lung is yet? Black lung? You'll learn about it before the end of the year. From what? From coal mining. If you coal mine for too long, you get black lung, and that's just as bad as any lung cancer because it stops you from being able to breathe. No, we do. Your lungs literally fill up with black crap. From the, from the dust. Anthracite is made from coal. Okay, is coal a mineral? No, it's a sedimentary rock though. It's a sedimentary rock made of organic living things. Anthracite is the unfoliated version of it when it's metamorphosed. Okay? All right. Do you guys, I, 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 does this help at all to see it kind of written out this way? Yeah. I'm seeing some head shakes. So you found a way that worked for you. That's good. Okay. I'm trying to find ways to help you guys study this better, to study it so you learn it better. Okay. Um, let's talk about the province of Virginia where we find metamorphic rock. I have one province. So this one, I mean sedimentary rock, we have three. This one I have one province. In the Piedmont, you find metamorphic rock. Where do you find metamorphic rock? Piedmont. In the Piedmont. Oh, that was hard. You find the youngest rocks in the coastal plain. In the coastal plain, that's good. And some northern. We'll, we'll review it in a minute, okay? The Piedmont. Okay. What province of the school is Woodbridge in? What province of Virginia is the school in? Piedmont. The Piedmont. Okay, if you wanted to go to the coastal plain, how do you get there? Drive. You dr oh, yeah, you drive, yeah. But you could actually walk there, too. Oh, yeah, fair Okay, do you turn on the old bridge? You turn, you, well, you can't turn left on the old bridge. It's almost impossible to do. So you turn right on the old bridge and go toward 123. And you'll pass by my Tackett's Mill and my favorite restaurant in Tackett's Mill. Okay, and you go... Then the hill starts to, what happens to the road? It starts to go downhill. And it goes downhill actually pretty steeply. And it winds and winds and winds and winds. And about a mile and a half to two miles, you're at the bottom of the road. Okay, at the bottom of the road, old bridge dead ends to 123. If you turn right, you hit 95. If you, if you turn left, you go up into Fairfax, Lorton Prison, across the what river? The Occoquan, the, the long bridge there by the harbor, if you look back as you go up the hill, you'll see a whole bunch of boulders and the river kind of stops and starts to go drastically uphill to where the Occoquan Reservoir is. You guys follow me? Okay. I've been there. When you went from the school downhill, all the way down the hill, you went from the... You went from the Piedmont into the coastal plain. The bottom of the hill, coastal plain. Top of the hill, the Piedmont. That's going to actually make a difference in just a few slides. Okay. You have mostly metamorphic rocks. It says igneous rocks, but most of the igneous rocks actually have undergone some type of metamorphism. So there are mighty, you know there's a quarry right down here? Yeah. A quarry right across the river. It's the Vulcan quarry. They're mining what's called the Occoquan granite. 
is not actually granite. It's a meta granite or a metamorphosed granite. It's a granite that hasn't quite made it to Nice. It's really low grade metamorphism. There is foliation in the Occoquan granite. So that means it has to be what kind of rock? Metamorphic. Because it has foliation, because only metamorphic rocks have foliation. Yeah. Is the cord clean? Is the what? Is the cord clean? Clean? Yeah. What do you mean by clean? Like swimmable? Uh, the quarry is still an active quarry, so they're still blasting and, and digging, and they will be for the next, like, I think they said they had, like, an, at least another 20 to 30 years there, if not longer. So they're, they're, they're still going to be playing. When it's all said and done, it'll be safe to swim there, but right now, it's still, there's no place to swim. You go down, and there'll be a truck roll over you. All right. Um, there are no fossils in the Piedmont. Why aren't there any fossils in the Piedmont? What kind of rock is it? It's metamorphic rock. Igneous rock. Can you have fossils in metamorphic rock? Yeah? How do they get there? To get a fossil, I'm sure you're going to say this, Sebastian. I'm going to keep going. To get a fossil, you have to take your dead body and bury it really fast, really deep, before it'll decompose, right? Can you bury something in metamorphic rock? No. Can you bury something in igneous rock? No. How does igneous rock form? Magma that crystallizes. Can you have a body be preserved in liquid magma? No. Can you have a body be preserved if there's heat and pressure cooking the rock? No. no. What's the only type of rock you can have a fossil in? Sedimentary. No sediment, no vein. There's mostly no sedimentary rock. You don't get fossils. Okay, last thing, last slide, and we're done. Okay, so yay. <laughs> If you want to go to the coastal plain, do you have to go uphill or downhill? Down. 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 We just talked about it, right? We're going to go down the hill past Tackett's Mill, down to the harbor, right? Like the electric, if you wanted to go to have dinner at the Electric Palm, you go down, downhill to the coastal plain. If you want to have dinner at my favorite restaurant in Tackett's Mill, you go to Taco Bell, it's on the top of the hill, you're still in the Piedmont. In Tackett's Mill. Like the machine. In Tackett's Mill. It's in Tackett's Mill. Okay. Uh, some quarries use like like mining. Why is there a fall zone? Shh, shh, shh. Mr. Hunt. I was explaining the course. Okay. Why is there a fall zone between the Piedmont and the coastal plain? Well, the Piedmont is up here. The coastal plain is down here. The entire thing. The coastal plain is simply not as high in elevation as the Piedmont. So water that's flowing up here has to get down here. So anytime you have a river crossing the Piedmont to the coastal plain, you get these waterfall features. Now this is not Niagara Falls waterfall, but it's still water going from high elevation to low elevation pretty quickly. Who's heard of Great Falls? Okay, Great Falls. Crossing the fall zone. Okay? So if I asked you a question, what is the fall zone, you would answer? Oh, waterfall like YouTube, so waterfall going down. Okay, to give you a concise answer, the fall zone is an area where water goes from the Piedmont to the coastal plain because there's a steep elevation change. And every time we have rivers that cross this, we get waterfalls of some kind. I mean, look at the Occoquan Reservoir going from the reservoir down to the, the, the lower river really quickly. It's not a true waterfall, but it's a fall zone. So it's a fall zone. Okay? All right, can we review for the test? Please, I mean, the test is next class. I want to make sure we get this. So review for the test. What's going on in the coastal plain that's so freaking awesome? Newest rocks. Youngest rocks. What, what, like, like Alexis said, Lexi, Alexis, what Alexis said, young rocks, new rocks, 
What kind of new rocks are they? Sedimentary rocks. Is that what you're saying? Okay. What's going on in the Piedmont? What kind of rocks are those? Metamorphic rock in the Piedmont. Where is Woodbridge High School? In the Piedmont. What's going on in the Blue Ridge? Nothing. Igneous rocks, the oldest rocks. Was that? No, no, valley and ridge is sedimentary rocks. What kind of sedimentary rocks? No, they're not the oldest. The oldest rocks are Blue Ridge. The only oldest rocks that you need to know about are the Blue Ridge. Okay. These are old sedimentary rocks, but they're not the oldest rocks. Okay. So the Valley and Ridge are really old sedimentary rocks. What's so cool about the Valley and Ridge? It has lots of caves. 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 All right. How about the Appalachian Plateau? Coal can be found there. 